Hi, everybody, and welcome to my video. Yay! Today's a good day. It's officially spring, I think, which means the hellish Canadian snow only has a few more weeks to live. And that makes me happy because I finally get to go outside and I'm not pacing around my apartment with nothing to do because I literally cannot dig my car out of the snow. My name is Laszlo, and welcome to this dark room that I live in. And nostalgia. It's a buzzword that gets thrown around quite a bit in the online space because a lot of people aren't too happy in their lives and they just like reliving times when they were happy. Of course, that's not really what nostalgia is, it's just realizing you're getting old. But nostalgia is a real thing, and it is very important to how we as young adults or old people maneuver through the world. So before we get into why nostalgia is so important in our lives, we kind of have to describe it. Nostalgia is reliving a happy experience you had when you were younger. I bet you were expecting a Webster's Dictionary definition. But we don't use dictionaries around here, much like we don't use air quotes correctly. If you're looking for an even more lax definition, nostalgia is just, oh, I, re I remember that thing. I liked that thing. Tell me if you remember this. You know what that sound is, right? You remember all the times you had to walk up to Nurse Joy, even if it was annoying, it was nice knowing your Pokemon were all right. Or what about this song? I haven't even played Undertale, but this theme just reminds me of being on the internet in like 2016. How about this scene? I gained the power needed to enter into the darkness. Remember the rush of emotions you felt as you just experienced one of the best fight scenes in anime history? That is what nostalgia is, is the feeling of seeing something you've experienced before and feeling happy that you're experiencing it again. For a lot of people, it's music, which is why I sang that song at the beginning of the video, because it tells you that it's Pokemon time and who doesn't want that? To others, it's video games that we played as children or in our teens that shaped us into the people we are today. The point is that everyone is nostalgic to something, but also not everyone is nostalgic to the same thing. Because it's a personal feeling, it's dependent on personal experience, it's hard to pinpoint how and where nostalgia will appear for different people. If you were to put Super Mario Galaxy in front of me, I would say, cool, I had this game when I was younger. But if you were to put Boogie for the Nintendo Wii in front of me, I'm popping the f off. I think it's a pretty universal emotion felt by pretty much everyone, which is great. It reminds us of the people we used to be and the happy times we had when we were younger. But lately, I've noticed a uh, trend of sorts. Something I'm going to call appeal to nostalgia. It's a company trying to take the emotion that we hold so dearly and turn it into something marketable, something that we can put money into. Maybe that's a little harsh. Maybe these studios are putting out products that appeal to the hearts of the buyers, which means they'll make more money. Or maybe it's these companies trying to manipulate your emotions to distract you from the fact that they're abusing human rights, but everything's fine because, hey, it's thing you liked when you were younger. Studies are being conducted into the best ways to use emotions. Brands are changing marketing strategies to appeal more to its consumers. All because customers love nostalgia. Do you think PepsiCo brought back Crystal Pepsi because it was good? You think Nintendo trying to sell you a $25 DLC that reuses courses from your childhood was for the players? You think they brought back Urusei Yatsura because it needed to be remade? Did Urusei Yatsura need a reboot? Anytime a show is popular, obviously they're going to have people constantly talk about how it needs to be remade and that they should continue the series and so on and so forth. But did Urusei Yatsura really need another anime adaptation? What is the new anime doing that the one made in 1981 is lacking? Animation and maybe direction is really the only answer I'll accept because apart from that, the shows are functionally the same. And in that regard, does any show need to be remade? Yes. While the topic of what shows should and should not be remade is a very large and complex issue, in Urusei Yatsura's case, I think the main reason is nostalgia. If you don't know, Urusei Yatsura is a gag comedy, so it's a whole lot of jokes and not a whole lot of story. While there is an overarching story that pops up occasionally, a lot of the time is spent on making its audience laugh. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, I'd go so far to say gag comedy has been in a decline and having a show that centers around that is refreshing. The thing is, jokes aren't as funny the second time around. Now the remake isn't a one-for-one -one copy of the original, it's more of a mix of the old anime and the manga coming together to create something better than the sum of its parts. Even at that though, if you had watched the original show, I don't think there's a lot that you can get out of this new anime that was already lacking in the 1981 version. 
Oh, Laszlo, animation and overall presentation is way better, so have- Shut it. The main appeal of the original Urusei Yatsura was its comedy and loom, and those haven't changed from the 1981 version, so an upgrade in presentation does not qualify it for a remake. Urusei Yatsura was often paraded as a cultural icon of anime because of, well, her, which made a whole lot of people love this show. There is a chance that by remaking the show, David Production thought they could show this cultural icon to a younger, maybe less informed crowd. But then I sit there and think, oh, this show is only an icon right now because there exists people who are nostalgic for it, and they push that nostalgia onto other people. And then I get confused because I, I don't know how to feel. I feel like I just solved quantum physics. So even though you may be sitting there, right, not nostalgic to Urusei Yatsura, you are being sold on the reboot because other people are nostalgic. Nostalgic by osmosis? Collective nostalgia? I'm not entirely sure what to call it, because there are people who love the original show, are nostalgic for it. It feels like people who aren't nostalgic for it are missing out, so they watch the reboot to feel included in cultural nostalgia. So while right now you might not be nostalgic for it, there are people in the community who are, so by osmosis you feel nostalgic. I'm scared. Now, does that mean that all reboots are inherently driven by nostalgia of the anime community and all reboots follow the same pattern? No, it's nuanced. Specifically, there are a few shows that have had some real bad anime, and I'm talking real bad. In particular, Fruits Basket, Full Metal Alchemist, and Trigun didn't have the greatest jump to animation. They're okay, but they leave a lot to be desired. Because these series are so loved, there was a push to create an anime that better represented the story that could have been shown in the original, but was not. While I've only ever watched the original Fruits Basket, I imagine that the new one was quite an improvement from the original, just from what I've heard from the community. Full Metal Alchemist is kind of a weird one, because the first anime adaptation was being put out faster than the mangaka could write it, so when the anime caught up, they basically had to make up their own ending. Not a lot of people were happy with that, so when the manga was finished and there was a solid conclusion to the story, they made Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which sought to complete what the original didn't. Trigun... Well, Trigun didn't really need a remake because the original was already pretty good, but we get to watch more Trigun, so who cares? I'm doing the thing, aren't I? One of the ways that an anime studio will try to appeal to the nostalgia of the viewers is to not remake a show, but to keep the same show running for what seems like forever. And I know what show you're already thinking about, keep that in your mind, we'll talk about it later. Naruto is a show loved by many, hated by few, and watched by everybody. And while I'm in that last category, I think Naruto and its offspring are perfect examples of how shows will try to regurgitate positive memories to lock you into watching a show. But before we get into all of that, I want to make a quick pit stop to analyze Naruto's widespread fame. So anime, right? In the West, anime has not been a popular thing for very long. Some would still argue it's not popular, but it's grown a lot from the niche internet forums and back alley communities of days gone. It wasn't really until the 2000s when anime companies realized that there was a market on the other side of the world that they could license their anime out to. While it took a few years to catch on, one of the first shows that actually did stick was our titular hero, Naruto which aired every day starting September 10th, 2005. I know for me, and I'm sure a lot of people watching this, Naruto was a constant in my life, all the way up until middle school, and to this day I remember sitting in front of my TV watching Naruto. You could say that I have fond memories of Naruto. Watching the older episodes makes me nostalgic. So what the f*** were they doing with Boruto? Ever since it was first serialized in Shonen Jump, I knew of its existence and always kind of questioned why it existed in the first place. I think a lot of shows are made to appeal to certain audiences, so naturally every anime that's made has a group of people that will validate that anime's existence. In my opinion, who is this anime for always has an answer. For Boruto, your immediate inclination might be that it's for shonen bros who love fight scenes and all the things that come with it, but I don't quite think so. I think Boruto was an attempt to capture the magic that Naruto had. In my opinion, which you're fine to disagree with, Boruto has never really felt like a standoff show that could be loved by all. It seems like a show that is reliant on its predecessor's success. And that doesn't really mean that it's a bad show, but I think to enjoy this show and everything that it tries to do, you have to have at least watched a bit of Naruto. Which means all things point to me loving this series, and I honestly think that they had people like me in mind when they were making Boruto. But it's not Naruto. I'm nostalgic to Naruto. It's this weird middle ground where I should love Boruto because it follows the story of the original, but I don't love it because it's not Naruto. Do young people that have no attachment to the original Naruto like Boruto at all? 
are people who are nostalgic for Naruto interested in watching a show that's so close to Naruto, but not quite what they remember? That's for you to think about. I guess my job is to just pose the question. Whether you think this is a good or bad anime, it's pretty obvious that Boruto was made with the intention of bringing back the characters you love. That's why it's advertised as Boruto, Naruto Next Generation, and why Naruto constantly has to show up and it feels so similar to Naruto. They constantly have to remind you that this is a sequel of Naruto and the cast of Naruto is here and you can see them all grown up. But that also means that it's dependent on Naruto to be a good show. I think Naruto was a very lightning in a bottle type of show where everything came together and it created this mass wave of nostalgia felt by every westerner. And when they tried capitalizing on that nostalgia, I think they worked too hard on trying to recreate that lightning in a bottle while relying on the old one too much. It's like transferring lightning from one bottle to the other. I'm in this analogy too deep to back out now. Remember that show I asked you to keep in mind? Let's get back to that. One Piece's rise to fame follows a very similar path as Naruto took. It was made during a time when anime was coming to the West that appealed to the younger crowds. People have a lot of nostalgia for it, and most importantly, it was on Toonami. But I think the difference is that One Piece isn't currently trying to capitalize on the nostalgia that it had. There's a few reasons as to why that might be the case, and I'll take counterpoints as to why One Piece does exploit nostalgia, but for now, I think there are two sides of the same coin. One of the more obvious differences, and I think the one that gives my theory the most weight, is the fact that One Piece is one show. Oh no. One of the more obvious differences, and I think the one that gives my theory the most amount of weight, is the fact that One Piece is one show and has stayed one show since the 90s. It's a lot harder to try and recapture the same lightning in a bottle as you did 18 years ago than to just never change that bottle. I said I was done with this analogy, but it makes sense here. I do think there's an argument to be made about how Oda has maybe extended the duration of One Piece because it became so successful, but it's still the same show. I think Boruto had the problem where they were reaching way too far to capture the nostalgia of Naruto, whereas One Piece, nostalgia isn't a factor in its current iteration. Sure, there are people who are nostalgic to One Piece, but the people who watch it now aren't watching it because of that nostalgia. One Piece still has a story to tell. It's not quite done yet. Naruto was done. It did not need to come back. I think you may have noticed that throughout this video I've interchanged appeal to nostalgia and exploitation of emotions when talking about when companies use nostalgia. And I did that deliberately. They're both the same thing, but used a little differently. Maybe the language I used made you sit up in your chair because I said something a little harsh and untruthful. Maybe you thought I didn't say enough and that I was a little too soft on the anime scene as a whole. However you feel about the anime sphere, there's a very clear manipulation of consumer emotions. Some may call it appealing to them, Others may call it exploiting them. I'm not here to discuss the morality of this. I like to think of my channel as the arbiter of questions and not the answer to ones already asked. Is it okay for the anime industry to appeal to nostalgia because it's what they think the viewers want? Or do you think the anime industry's forcible use of nostalgia is just a way to exploit their consumers? Ultimately, not up for me to decide. You're the viewer here. I put on this elaborate show for you, and now it's your turn to do your job. I hope every time you sit down to watch a show, you question why they made it, and ask yourself a similar question that I asked you here today. Did they make this show for you, or are you falling into their lap? My name is Laszlo, and I hope you remember me. Thank you for watching. See ya.